So we just finished looking at these inverse cases. The idea of how secant is related to cos, how cosecant is related to sine, and how cotangent is related to tan. It's the idea of one over. So let's look at a problem doing that. So we can be given something like this, secant of 3x minus 30. Oh, that's even write it out. So we have secant of, this is all in brackets, this next part, 3x minus 30. And that is equal to square root 2. Great. Well, you don't likely have a secant button on your calculator. So what do we have to do? We have to convert it into something we know. Secant is related to cos. In fact, we can rewrite this whole thing as 1 over cos of the same term, the same part in brackets. It remains the same. So secant becomes cos of secant becomes cos. It just gets flipped. So it becomes 1 over. And that's still equal to square root 2. Well, now we have a cosine function, like before, we can try and solve. But the trick is, we likely want to flip it. We have 1 over, so if we wanted to, we could cross multiply, we could bring this over there, and then divide by 2, or square root 2, but why bother? Let's just flip both sides of the equation, because we can think this is the same as saying square root 2 over 1. Anything divided by 1 is still itself, so we can think there's a 1 there. Flip both sides. So I'm going to get cosine of 3x minus 30. And technically, I should think this is degrees, by the way, 30 degrees. Ooh, I've got the right degrees there, too. And that's all equal to 1 over square root 2. Great. Well, now I've got the same kind of problem I've been looking at before. How do I get rid of cos? I take cos to the minus 1 on both sides. Ooh, such a squeaky marker. I'll use a square bracket to differentiate and make it easier to tell the difference. This, I'm going to have to give myself a little bit more room, so I'm erasing it for a second. Bear with me. Cos to the minus 1 of 1 over square root 2. Great. Well, cos to the minus 1 of 1 over square root 2 should actually give me 45. Remember, this cancels, so we get 3x minus 30 degrees, and that should be equal to 45 degrees. Punch that into our calculator. That is the number we should get. Os is, as always, well, yeah, that should give us 45. And remember, this is the number we're going to be referencing later. We're going to be using this when we try and solve our second angle, because we want to find what cos of what equals 1 over square root 2. In this case, it's 45. But that's not what x is equal to. That's what our initial theta is, the theta in here that will make cos equal to 1 over square root 2. But we still have to solve for x. In this case, we go 3x minus 30 plus 30, because we're canceling out the 30. So that's equal to 45 plus 30 as well. And of course, these are all degrees. So we get 3x equals 75 degrees. And if we want to get x on its own, divide both sides by 3. I think I might have to switch colors. This one's starting to die. Finish off this part of the problem. We get x equals 25 degrees. So that's one possible solution we have. But we still have to find our other possible x. In this case, again, we're starting with 45. 45, cos 45 equals 1 over square root 2. Great. We have to figure out what other solution we're going to have using one of these three. And again, it's all about this cast system. In this case, cos equals 1 over square root 2, a positive number. Well, where is cos positive? Here. Well, 45 degrees falls in this region. Not positive here, here, positive here. So we want to end up in this quadrant, our other solution. Which of these cases will give that? 45 plus 180, 225, puts us here. Four, this would give us 135, puts us in there. 360 minus 45, though, that's 315. It puts us in the quadrant we want. So we're thinking 360 minus 45, that should be our other theta, we can think. Theta 2. The other possible angle that would make cos equal 1 over square root 2. So in other words, 
we can say that's equal to 315 degrees. All we're doing is 360 minus 45. And if we plug that into our calculator, we should find that cos of 315 equals 1 over square root 2. But that's not x. That's the term we'd put in here to make square root 1 over square root 2. This is actually equal to the entire terms in the brackets. We can think theta 2, theta 2, and actually, you know what, I'm going to start somewhere else because I think I'm going to run out of room. So I'm going to write it over here. Theta 2 is equal to 315 degrees or equal to this whole 3x minus 30 degrees part. So we want to solve that. 315 degrees equals 3x minus 30 degrees. Well, we basically want to add 30 degrees to both sides, cancel this out. We get 345 degrees equals 3x. Divide both sides by 3. x equals 115 degrees. It's another viable solution. Great. But are we done? No. Remember, we're looking between 0 and 360, and we have this dreaded term in front of the x. The term in front of the x is not equal to 1, so the period, how often this function repeats, is influenced. So we have to figure out, is there going to be more solutions? When I look and see 25 and 115, it feels likely I'll get more solutions, but I should check the period first. And I'll actually use the blue marker to differentiate that. So remember, normally the period is 360. Your normal cos, tan, or sine function has a period of 360. But you have to divide it by the term in front of the x to find the new period. In this case, we have 3 in front, so we have to divide it by 3, which gives us 120 degrees. That is our new period. This is how often the function repeats itself. Every 120 degrees, we should get the exact same function occurring again. Great. So we've shrunk it down. We've made more solutions possible in this 360 degree range. So, we have to consider other possible solutions. We can call this one x1 if we want. We can call this one x2 if we want. Two viable solutions that would satisfy this equation. We could also solve for some more. We just saw it repeats every 120 degrees. That's what this means, remember. It repeats every 120. So if 25 is an answer. Well, 25 plus 120 should also be an answer. This would be our third solution. So 145 degrees, if we plug that in, should also satisfy this equation. And it's within the range we're interested in, so it's a solution. Well, we can keep going. 145 is a solution. 145 plus 120 should also be a solution. We can call that x4 if we want. Well, that's the same as 265 degrees, which would be our fourth possible solution. And theoretically, another 120 on top of that would give us another solution. But that would actually be 385 and would be outside the range we're interested. You keep adding this period onto the solutions you found until you go outside the range. Because sure, technically that would solve the equation, but it's outside the range we're interested in, so it's rejected, it's ignored. So these are two viable solutions, and we can do the exact same thing to this solution we found right here. If 115 degrees is a solution, so would 115 plus 120. We can call that x5. So we got 235 equals a solution. Again, we could do uh, 235 plus 120. As always, I should be writing degrees on everything, which is the same as 355 degrees, and that would also be a viable solution. So we actually ended up with six solutions. I could keep going, but I'd be outside the range of interest. It's also worth noting, by the way, you could do minus 120. If I was subtracting 120, you're going in the opposite direction, those would also satisfy the equation, but you can think 25 minus 120 we're below zero. Same with 115 minus 120. Well, minus 5 below zero, so outside the range that way too. But you can technically go in both directions. 
You just keep adding or subtracting this until you're outside the range you're defined. So we ended up with six viable solutions to this problem.